Hi everybody, my name's Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, for us here at Bridging, when we started these shows literally 15 years ago, we, we really tried intentionally to make every show transcendental, to have no time reference, to have no space reference, to just make each show about love and connection and, and, and the infinite and, and the inclusion of all of us into an experience of, of love and oneness. And that has been the intention of all the shows. And, you know, from the very beginning, it was dedicated to the oneness. It was dedicated to that experience. And this show is the 250th show. And that is a really amazing, amazing, and this time, in this day and age, to do 250 shows with an all-volunteer crew is just, really, it's, it's, it's just a miracle that, you know, we've been in like 40, not 40, I'm exaggerating a hair, but we've been in about four or five different studios, and in each studio there have been benefits and, and non-benefits, and, and the crew is such an incredibly dedicated group that literally some of the people have done every show over the 15 years. Every one of the 250 shows have, have been done by certain of the same people. And the others have done literally hundreds of shows. And, and I know because I read a lot of the emails and a lot of the comments that come through on YouTube, that come through on, on Facebook, of, of people recognizing the effort and the intention and the, the commitment and, and the dedication and the love of, of the crew. And, you know, we, I've talked about this a lot, about how, you know, this crew is such a, an incredibly dedicated and consistent group of people doing it out of love, out of a desire to be part of, of a collaboration into an experience of, of our connectedness, of our truth, of our love, of our oneness. I mean, we've talked about it, and I think we're filming, t as we're filming today, we're doing a time-lapse photography, so you can see how we come into a, st a, a space, and it's got all kinds of chairs and all kinds of things, and, and we empty it, and then build all this equipment and lighting, and, and, and it's done to serve the love. And, and really, for all of us now, that has to be the the rallying cry that together we can, together we can as a group in serving the love, can transform 
what clearly is up until this moment a tremendously dysfunctional human family. We're at war and, and ethnic cleansings and abuse of children and, and lack of water in certain places and, and you know extraordinarily weird distributions of assets and money comes into a, a space where love and, and connection and, and the brotherhood and sisterhood of, of humankind with each other and, and the animals and the birds and the, the oceans and the mountains are really part of that movement of each of our lives. So we here doing the 250 shows feel so honored to be able to do that and so honored to and so happy and delighted to see all the the comments and all, all the vibrations and all the energies and all the experiences of love people are having through the efforts of all these extraordinary bridging crew, bridging family. So because I'm here and I get to talk about it, you know, I want to thank you for all of that. And I know you want to thank this extraordinary crew for making it possible. And, you know, earlier we had talked about one of the people who was involved, who's now doing some of the audio tonight, uh, Joe Leff. He said, we're going to do a thousand shows. That was his prediction. I said, you know, they'll probably have to wheel us out. And this is the 250th, so maybe we have 750 more. And maybe it'll be in a different place. Maybe it'll be where we can do more, where we can do like a tonight show where we do 200 or 300 a year because I am telling you there are that many extraordinary beings on this planet now who are having experiences that are so profound and so so transcendental and so in a recognition and experience of the love and the oneness of truth of God that literally we could do with the right set of equipment with the right set of buildings and and and, and money to pay the crew so the crew wouldn't have to volunteer that if we had a studio set up like that we could do 300 shows a year that it would be so far out and maybe that's that's the next step that's one of the new paradigms that are coming a recognition of the value of light workers and light organizations and artists and musicians like bridging but there are thousands and hundreds of thousands and literally millions of artists and musicians and light workers and light organizations that up until this point, the value of their incredible intention, desire, commitment to healing the heart has not been recognized by a society as a whole. But that is coming and <laughs> not soon enough as far as a lot of us are concerned. And tonight's guest has dedicated her life, as all the guests in Bridging have, to that recognition, to, to, to spreading love, spreading oneness, spreading healing, spreading awareness. Eliza Matadalian, she's an internationally acclaimed medical intuitive. She's a healer. She's a spiritual teacher. She's written an award-winning book. Uh, she developed a groundbreaking new healing method, DHM, the Dalian uh, Healing Method. Her new book, uh, In Search of the Miraculous, Healing into Consciousness, has won you know, numerous. I think we're up to, you know, six, eight, ten international awards. And she's dedicated her life to helping others in healing and awakening. And, you know, it's time and together we can collaboratively. This group can do 250 shows and collaboratively and creatively. The people on this planet could turn this again into the Garden of Eden, can, can reawaken that love and that consciousness and that oneness and you know as most of you know we show videos in the show and one is a beautiful video an introduction to Mata and her work and her her healing methods and the other one is a beautiful uh, well, I'll talk about that but it's a beautiful art music video by one of Bridging's tech geniuses George Graves who put it together for us with a uh, music video from Lessia it's called Teapot it's a beautiful video of a lot of the art that comes in due to this, as most of you know, we're in the middle of an international healing art project, which came as a vision of reaching out to the world as part of this healing, as part of the healing of the heart, as an acupuncture for the planet, to reach out to the world and to use this bridging method of distribution to reach out and say, anybody 
of any skill level, any, and any size, any format, to produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. And pieces have come in of all different sizes, formats, that are so beautiful and so powerful. And tonight we have two here on the set with us. Kat Kariaku has done a piece, and Scott Bloomfield is actually here with us and brought the piece up. Both of them have done extraordinary pieces, all based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. And just, if, if anybody wants to be inspired, if anybody's having a good day and wants a better day, if anybody's having a bad day and wants to be, have a better day, go to Heaven to Earth Art, heaven to earth, a -R -T com, and start flipping through the pages and see the art, see the text, see the poems, see the inspiration of these people, and then go to their websites. Really, you could spend days just into this ocean of creativity, this ocean of love. And all of them has done it without paperwork, just... Yes, we want to be involved, we want to share the love, we want to share the creativity, we want to be collaborative. So really, we're fortunate to have two extraordinary pieces. So let's start with a short meditation, then we'll have Mata's video, and then Mata will be with us. So please join me in a short meditation. So uh, the first video, it's Mata's video, it's introdu uh, introduction to her book and her healing method in search of the miraculous, uh, it's beautiful, so enjoy. The effort is to, to, to empty the vessel so you can receive an experience. Because if you're, if you're given something and you're too full, you're not going to even recognize it. If we really want to break through the pain body, we need to start looking at what it, what it consists of. Instead of fighting with it and saying, I have to let go of something, it's impossible to let go of anything unless there is an understanding. The ego and consciousness develop simultaneously. If the ego doesn't develop, consciousness does not develop. You cannot really become more conscious if you deny the ego. It's a process of healing. And what we're healing is our wounded ego. The moment you say ego is bad, you're also putting a lid on consciousness. What Eckhart calls a pain body, I call a wounded ego. Unless we heal the wounded ego into a healthy ego, it is impossible to transcend the ego. This is very important to remember. Because what we try to do, instead of really understanding that um, until we get to a state of complete self-sufficiency and a complete state of being comfortable with who we are, we cannot transcend anything. Awakening is impossible. Don't struggle with your ego. Accept it. Welcome it and look at, okay, what are the lessons here? Why am I having this difficulty? Once you understand it, that's it. It's like. You understand it. You don't have to carry that with you anymore. That's where consciousness comes in. It's the looking in the right direction that's going to help. To really know what you're working with is whatever is in front of you right now and happening in your life right now that creates a discomfort. That's basically the area of the work. Instead of trying to be present, let me see what's preventing me from being present. That's where your soul says, this is where you have to become conscious. What I feel most excited about is my new healing method. Because the way I feel it, it it's, it's such a quick um, way to transform energy that I feel the, the, the consciousness on the planet is ready for it. I, I work a lot with pain. And anytime people come to me, they, they bring a list of physical problems or emotional, mental problems. They're all interconnected. 
Um, and basically what I look at is, okay, this, let's see what are the areas of unconsciousness that are keeping you in this situation. And once, once those areas are looked at and worked through, magically there's no pain. Literally. It took me seven years to complete it because I wanted to create a map. A map of how does the ego and consciousness develop hand in hand. There was every aspect that, that sort of that to create a map you have to spend a lot of time looking at different parts of the journey. And I knew that there's something needed to be written. The development of my healing method was happening along the way. And then one day I sat and I said, okay, I need a title for this book. What should it be called? In Search of the Miraculous. And I said, okay, well, that's a title by Uspensky and that's a title by Osho. <laughs> if this is what existence is giving me, this is so be it. So I tried to bring some of those commonalities there and also the differences in terms of where each one of us are. So I have seven phases of ego's development in the book describing how the ego and consciousness develop step by step. I haven't really seen a map that can take you with an understanding of the, the phases that your ego goes through. The book is very full. There's a lot of things in there. So you can, it, it's almost like if you read it and then you read it again, you might see other things. So what I'd like to do basically with my book and my work, my healing method, is help to maybe take people to another step of, okay, you've done all this work, you've been reading all these books, and you have a certain understanding, but let's get to business now, and let's be practical. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So that was a beautiful video. So the picture you're seeing in between Mata and I is by Kat. Kariaku, it's called Bridge of Love. Uh, this came, Kat did it, and sent it to us from Mediterranean Cyprus. It's an acrylic on canvas. It's one of the extraordinary pieces of art that are coming in from all over the world. It is so inspiring to see them come in and just see the, the love and the energy and the intention that comes in with these. And a lot of people put in their poetry and their writings and what it means for them to do it and all that. I'd really recommend people if not wanting to join us and put in a piece and manifest a piece, to at least go to the Art Project site and just look at it. I'm telling you, it is extraordinarily inspiring. HeavenToEarthArt.com. So now we're on the set with Mana. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so you've had an interesting journey into this moment of consciousness and awakening and healing. Why don't you talk a little bit about that and the, the points that really you know, moved you into that experience? Um, this is uh, something that I don't quite fancy talking about myself, but I'll um, usually I like to, to, to say things about myself just as an example for others to encourage them okay. Fine. on their journey. <laughs> so um, the way I see our journey, everybody starts at different place, different point to how far they've come, how far they've come in a previous lifetime, where they've left off. So, what I've discovered is a continuation. A journey is a continuation. And in a way, um, one lifetime is not enough to realize everything, to become fully conscious. So therefore, we move from life to life to life to continue. Um, in my case, I've had too many lives. I've been here for too long. And it feels like uh, my time is up. So this lifetime, when, when I... Um, started this, this lifetime's journey is um, somewhere I knew that um, everything really is, is not as important as me knowing myself. So I you started knew that from early on. I, I knew that from early on and I had a beautiful uh, two very um, important experiences that, that were to do with my grandparents, one with the grandmother and the other one with the grandfather. Um, witnessing my grandfather's death um, put me into a notice that I'll be dying as well. So I was five years old, and I realized that I am going to die as well. So then the question arose, who am I? What am I doing here? Where do I come from? These are questions we ask, every single person asks them sometime in their life. 
Um, for me, it happened when I was five years old simply because I witnessed death. And death is a beautiful teacher, which we, in a Western culture, normally we try to sterilize it and not look at it uh, because of our own fear. But if we look at it, death could be such a liberating experience, just realizing that, okay, this is a temporary life. I'm going to go one day, too. So what am I doing here? What am I going to take with me? What's the most important? And the second experience happened at the age of maybe six with my grandmother when um, I was watching her pray every night before she went to bed. And uh, growing up in a socialist country, even though I wasn't aware I was in a socialist country, that somehow in the collective you feel that you pick that up, especially as a child. Mm -hmm. So I started teasing her, and I said, there is no God. Where is God? If there is God, show him to me. And she, she was very play, playful with it. And she basically stopped me, and she said, God is within you. God is within everywhere that you, everything you see around you is God. And it's within every one. So that totally made sense. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll stop teasing her. She gave me the right answer. And to me, children are extremely, extremely wise. They come knowing. We all come knowing. What happens then we start getting brainwashed <laughs> with all the conditionings, belief systems, what's right, what's wrong, and we forget the wisdom that we come with. We, co we forget that knowing. Um, and children are not afraid. If we really look at children, they're not afraid. But we instill fear in them. And gradually, they grow up with a lot of baggage. And then as we get older, we work double, triple hard to start get, peeling away that, that baggage. So, and that's what we call spiritual journey. So in other words, we come knowing, and then we forget that we know, and then rediscover it again. So for me, having that kind of foundation was very helpful. And um, at the age of 24, I came across a book by Osho called Beware of Socialism. Rajneesh. At the time, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. And that totally resonated. And then I started meditating and um, basically realizing early on that it's up to me and nobody can do it for me. Mm -hmm. And this is what another thing many times people think, well, if I follow this guru, follow this teacher, they're going to do it for me, but it's impossible. Nobody can do it for anyone because we have uh, the free will. It, it's, it's our dignity as, as individuals. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what, if, if each person realizes and understands that following will postpone you finding your truth, then the, the finding will become a lot, a lot faster and will be a lot more fun because through that mm -hmm. is how you're going to start feeling more empowered through that is how you're going to start finding out about love and about your heart and about the, what, what's the um, unconsciousness within you and how to transform it. Basically, the journey becomes then very exciting. And who would want to give that to someone else, that, that, the excitement of discovery? So through that and through meditation is how I had several very profound experiences to further my initial um, sort of recognition that life is temporary, and um, coming to a recognition that the journey is the goal. But the moment you come to that understanding, to that recognition, all the anxiety drops, because the anxiety is based on the mind which is trying to find, and I went through that anxiety as well, because then enlightenment became the focus, yeah? And I would do everything possible, nothing mattered. Meditation, meditation, meditation. Who am I? Who am I? Um, and, and finally, once you really focus, you really put all your energy into it, it's like anything else. Whatever you put our, our focus into mm -hmm. starts growing. And, and then existence says, okay, now you deserve the gift. Now we're going to reveal something to you. Yeah, the inner hunger has reached a certain point that the door opens. The door opens. It's like the veil suddenly drops. And then you realize that the whole existence is made of joy. And that was my experience. Everything is made of joy, um, and, and nothing is separate. 
So it's not a mental thing, we're all one. It's just a recognition that in that emptiness, in the nothingness, in the center, in the core, is where we're one. We're not one in our thoughts. We're, we're not one in our emotions, although we experience them similarly. However, that oneness is the knowing. It's the root. Knowing that I am not the ego. Knowing that I am. That e eternal emness, which is I am God. I am the creator. So, um, and light, we talk about light. Uh, for me, it was an experience of light. So then it's not just, yeah, I'm light, but I know I'm light. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, and, and what is that light? The I am is the consciousness. It's not even me anymore. It's just that knowingness. Um, and that's pretty much, uh, in a nutshell, the journey. And once you come to that point, it's like, okay, I know that this is a, I'm temporarily visiting this planet. I'll have, I can live fully without holding back. And once I'm ready to let go of my body, then bring it on. So where am I moving next? There's, there's so much to explore. There's so much to expand. And consciousness expands, expands through experiencing. So what can I experience next? In other words, enlightenment is not the end. People think, OK, I become enlightened, and all my problems are solved, and that's the end. I'm going to live happily ever after. But what the truth is, you're still going to experience ups and downs. You're still going to, you're still living in a physical world. Um, the ego, to, to a point, is there and it's necessary. The difference is that you're not identified with it. You know you're not it. You're not the mind. So the anxiety is not there. That's the main difference. You don't have the inner anxiety that normally you would have when you don't know that truth. And then the whole universe is your home. So a lot lighter. You're a well, lot lighter. Well, it's, it's ecstatic. Right. It's so joyful because the joy comes out of creation. And then you know I am the creator. Basically, consciousness means knowing that I am the master of my destiny. So I'm not helpless. I'm not um, insecure. I know exactly where I'm going, and I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I'm not afraid to experience. I'm not afraid to, to, to feel whatever I need to feel. So you don't hide from things. You, you don't avoid things. But on the contrary, you say, I want to know what, what's behind this veil. I want to know uh, what's behind this emotion. So it's just a change of attitude. When we change our attitude to think that, OK, well, Bring it on. Let me experience it. Let me live it. Because the only way I'm going to know is by living it. Then life becomes more joyful. Then even when, when the lows come, you know, okay, well, this is going to change because it's a wave. Life is a wave. There's always ups and downs. But you just keep watching it. And when there's clouds and it's cold, and you go, okay, it's cold. I know it's gonna, the sun is going to come at some point. So it's not like everything's dark. So th there's no depression in that, in that sense, yeah? When there's no anxiety, you know everything's temporary. How can you be depressed? Well, also, I mean, in a way I would look at it is there's also a tremendous momentum of, of empowering, inspiring, creative, collaborative things. So there's a, like I, we were talking earlier about, there's a, like a grand highway and the, and the main road is, is in passion, is, is full of love. Well, that, that's, that's, that's it. it. It's like um, when you start to know yourself, uh, then you meet people who are really also authentic within themselves. Then you don't even need to talk about love. You don't need to talk about connection. It's, it's automatic. You just know. Yeah, you're just there playing. And in that silence where the truth is. So the silence is here every moment behind all the words. And if you're present, you're present in that silence out of which everything arises, consciousness arises. So then in that silence, in that moment, whatever arises, you just live it. You don't hold back. You don't suppress. Um, and then... And you also you've developed some level of discernment as part of that process. So you're in harmony. So each motion 
you're in every moment and each motion is, is harmonious. And you never know like three motions down because there's a lot of breaths between here and there, in essence. Well, the harmony is when you're in, in your spontaneity, you're, you're present. Right. Then you're in harmony because there's nothing internal that you're struggling with. Right. And that's harmony. Right. If you don't struggle, you're in harmony. So, and, and you know the difference. Of course, right. yeah. Yeah, that's right. And you're building, I mean, as you grow in that, you're, you're building up momentum and knowing harmony and disharmony. So you, you're almost, in a sense, choosing harmony as you proceed. And then you're rubbing up against harmony more and more, and then you realize you are that harmony. I mean, in essence, we're describing the experience of a lot of human beings now experience more and more of a recognition of their own divinity in a way. The, the choosing in a way is still, um, it, it's good to be able to choose. And um, the choosing happens as a result of inner knowing. If, if right. it happens as a result of inner knowing, then, then you know. Yeah, it's not reasonable. It's, it's internal. It's intuitive. Exactly. It. Yeah. Yeah. Because what, what happens when people are confused with this cho choosing or choice? Many people think they can choose through their mind. Yeah, and reason it's doesn't. Yeah, yeah, because you know we always talk about you know we're hurtling through space on a ball. I mean, nothing is reasonable. At some point, you realize that nothing about this whole experiment, this whole process, is reasonable. So, if you can throw that out the window, what's the other method for m moving through life? Living it. Yeah, knowing that inner yeah. guidance. Yeah. Because it, it, that's that, that's that's the whole principle, actually, when I'm working with my healing method, it's about living what's unlived, what's suppressed. Because anything suppressed and it's not lived, it's like a program, it's a belief. And it, it has power. Beliefs have power. Anything suppressed has power. The moment they're lived, they come forefront, you see them, in the seeing you become conscious. Yeah, you shine light on the darkness. That's right. And in that seeing, transformation happens. Transformation doesn't happen otherwise. It cannot happen through the mind. That's where meditation comes in. Yeah? Meditation simply meaning you watch and you witness. And through witnessing, you understand how the mind works in duality. You understand how emotions are connected with the mind, how they work. And then you start disidentifying because you understand you are simply the witness. And the witness is always here, and it's always in this moment. Nowhere else. So, for example, I'm talking to you, and I'm simultaneously witnessing what's going on inside me. And I'm a How's witness. How's it going? It's going very good. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course we're glad. So I'm witnessing what's. What, I'm witnessing your presence. Mm -hmm. I'm witnessing. Even though I'm not looking at, at the audience, I'm, I'm, I'm a witness to their presence. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm witnessing the, the light shining on me, the tree mm -hmm. behind you. So I'm a present, I'm witness to everything, the curtains, uh, as I'm speaking to you. Right. So this is being present. And at the same time, I'm also present with realization of w w where the words are coming from. I'm witnessing my, my voice, I'm witnessing what I'm saying. And, yeah, and it's consciousness watching. That's consciousness watching, yes. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> right. Now yeah, I mean, you know, say. actually, I brought some CDs, I think I gave you one, mm -hmm. and one of the lines on there, you know, we can try so hard when it's easy. And, you know, it's just a tricky, it, you know, this experiment here on Earth, or at least until this time, or for this period of time, is, is fairly tricky in that way. That it, you know, it looks hard, it looks difficult. And really, in a sense, it's, you know, there's a very thin veil between you and who you really are. And that veil seems to be huge and insurmountable in certain the ways. The difficulty is because of the mind. It, it's like a dog chasing the tail, its own tail. That's what the mind does. Yeah, yeah squeezing a balloon, you never yeah, get the air. Yeah, and it's very of. clever. So it takes you on a, on a chase of itself so it can stay alive. And that's the tricky part, to be able to see how the mind plays the game, mm -hmm. to keep itself alive. You know, maybe what we'll do is watch a second video, this beautiful art music video, and we'll come back and you'll talk more about that and maybe do a little 
you know, something. Okay, so the second video is, as I said earlier, this beautiful art music video done by George Graves with Lessia Music from uh, the Lessia Bridging Heaven Earth CDs called Teapot. But look at some of this art. I mean, it was done with all these pieces have come in for the Bridging Heaven Earth International Healing Art Project, which came as a healing for the planet, came as, you know, acupuncture for the planet. You know, just to really collaboratively and creatively do a healing for the heart of the planet. So it's a beautiful video. Enjoy. Just that silly teapot in the ancient nursery rhyme. I've got a cute little handle, an arrogant spout, and I tip over all the time. Cause nothing that belongs to me is ever really mine. How can I? Life's been a big old party Floating merrily down the street When I'm really wide awake I can tell it's just a dream Cause we're all spinning around on a ball in space We're just little grains of sand Nothing really matters much Once we find Let's not spoil the moment Let's not push and shove Let's not battle to be right In the name of love I like the way your gentle eyes Can twist Like the way you give me grief, cause it's a part of who you are. And when you smile, I feel your smile. I'm connected at the soul. Your magic is my your magic, magic is my and magic. it's also beautiful. So let's not spoil the moment. Let's not. There's no one to be conquered since All we are is love We only have each moment Wouldn't you rather play? I'd hate to waste a miracle Maybe I should stay I'd sure hate to waste Just that silly teapot in the ancient nursery. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So, yeah, that, I, I really love that video. It's done by George Graves. Uh, from the the, uh, the the music is Lessia music from Teapot. Uh, you know, go to the art project site. It's really inspiring. Heaven to Earth art. It's about love, about creativity, collaboration. Really join us. The more people who join us, the more there's healing, the more there's a collective consciousness of, of energy of bridging heaven and earth. So the beautiful piece you're seeing in between us was done by Scott Bloomfield. It's called The Bridge at Sunrise. It's digital art. Uh, Scott's from Long Beach, California. You know, tremendous artist on a lot of different formats. Just really a gifted being. And you know, he did this piece literally in a few days once he came up to the to when we were shooting and met everybody and then said he just had to be part of the project had to manifest a piece and just extraordinary power and love and intention to bridge heaven and earth so we're back with Mata so yeah we were talking about your healing method why don't you you know talk a little about that and how you work with people and things like that 
Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking maybe I should work on you for a moment. Yeah, you think? That's the how. That's the easy way to show how. Yeah, you think? Go ahead. I can explain a little bit how it works. Okay. Um, basically, if, if I was to ask you a question, uh, what's the difference between energy and the mind? How does the mind work and how does the energy work? So if we look at those um, paradigms, the mind, how it functions, the energy, how it functions, then we can look at healing with a different perspective. Because a part of who we are, our constitution, is not just the body. So we have the mind, we have the emotions. And those things are within the energy. Energy itself is neutral. When there's a mind, there's thoughts and there's emotions, then the energy would move the way the mind would channel it. And accordingly, we would feel a state of health or a state of ill health. Disease. Mm -hmm. right. Disease, that's right. So uh, when the thoughts and emotions are suppressed within the energy, naturally the energy is blocked. And uh, if we continue suppressing, because we have a pattern, right? We're afraid to express who we are. We're afraid to be true to ourselves um, because we're afraid to be rejected. We're afraid of what other people would say. We're afraid of judgment. So we become artificial in a way. And when we become artificial, the body recognizes that because there's all sorts of blocks in the body. Those blocks then start creating illness, start creating disease, start creating pain. And in a way, the body says, hello, here's, here's pain for you. Now you have to look inside. You have to find out what's going on. And just taking medication is not going to be enough. And it's all about transforming your energy. If you want to be healthy and whole, you have to come back into that inner knowing, the inner transformation. So with this method, what I do, I look into the issue, whatever symptom is, and I look into the layers in the unconscious, where the original thought or the program originated. What's the root cause of something? The root cause always happens as a result of a conclusion we make out of, uh, when we have an experience, then we make a conclusion about the experience. Yeah? Um, when you make a conclusion, that conclusion becomes a belief. That belief is then imprinted in your physical cells. And as a result, you might be unconscious, you're not remembering something happened. You had a, a certain experience, traumatic, or most, most of the time it's traumatic experiences that get stored and we don't want to look at them, we're afraid. Um, and then something else triggers it uh, uh, outside, and the, that belief starts being projected automatically. It's yeah, not even that domino starts falling. Right. With, so right. so okay. what happens, because we're identified with that belief, then we project it on the environment, on other people. Instead, we need to look inside to see, okay, what is the origin of those beliefs. So what I do with this method, I basically look into what kind of beliefs are in the, in the energy in terms of thought forms create the belief. So the body is like a computer. Whatever program is in the body, that's how the energy is going to run. If we want to change the way we feel physically, we want to change our physical health, emotional health, mental health, and spiritual health, we need to go into the programs because they're running the show. It's like um, the tip of the iceberg is the head, the body is the bottom of the iceberg. So the tip of the iceberg says, okay, we're going to Hawaii, let's pack a bikini, let's pack our swimsuit. And the bottom of the iceberg says, I've got different plans, we're going to North Pole, you're going to freeze there. So we need to see what's in the bottom of the iceberg, because that's where the, the, the main force is. So with this method, I go into the bottom of the iceberg. I go through layer and layer to see what are those thought forms and beliefs. And we need to work through the whole body because different parts of the body um, store different programs, different thought forms. And many times they're contradictory. One part says, I hate you. The other part says, I love you. And then there's that internal struggle. 
And then we have the yin yang energies, the male female energies within. There might be a struggle there. There might be fear. And when we talk about grounding, most people are not grounded because the awareness does not reach all the way down to your feet. So when the awareness reaches the, to the feet, that's where you can st start knowing what's going on inside. So if there's fear, obviously you don't want to look anywhere below the solar plexus. And we automatically stop breathing. When we stop breathing, obviously, when the st breath stops, your awareness stops. And it's the undoing of that whole process. And it could be done very quickly. Can it only be done one-on-one? -on -one? In other words, is it you and one participant, or can it be done in a group setting? That, that's a good question. I started working one-on-one. -on -one, um, with, with, and I know when the shift happens, and I know when it's an awareness in, comes, comes for, forward. So once the thought forms are released, the, the method is you get to the thought forms that are suppressed, you express them, releases the energy that is holding them, and then awareness automatically comes in. I've been doing this one-on-one, -on -one, but then I thought, you know, I'd like to pass this on to more people because I'm just one person. Many people are asking me to train them, and I know in order to train someone, they need to have a certain level of awareness because you can't work with someone else's thought forms if you're still struggling with your own. You can make a mess. It wouldn't work as well. It wouldn't work as well, and you can make a mess. So I'm very right. conscientious of that. Right. So right now, I've developed a self-healing way to do this on your own. And I'm in the process of recording a CD where um, actually you can do it on your own. And I've experimented it in, in my workshops. Um, and I was amazed at the results. So people were able to come to, to that very profound transformation on their own. And, and my hope is, because my, my psychology is, um, I feel each person needs to take responsibility for their own healing and transformation, as I was saying earlier. So this is a method that can help people do that. Take the power back into your own hands. So you don't have to spend years and years and years working on one issue. It could be worked through very quickly in, in one little session. And, and you see it once you see something. You're no longer a victim of that because it's no longer unconscious. And then the energy shifts. The internal transformation happens automatically. So that's uh, I'm, I'm very excited about the method because I feel if people do it, the more people do it on the planet, and each person transforming their own internal energy, that's how it's almost like a, like a time bomb could just explode, because there's nobody sitting and manipulating it. it. It's internal combustion. That's how it happened for me. It was like an internal combustion, nothing external. So um, that's my hope, that we can, we can get more people to do this on their own. And hopefully we'll meet again at some point when the CD is ready and we can talk about it a little bit more. Yeah, because I really have a sense. I mean, I know that, uh, that, and you know, we've done 250 shows as I talked about at the beginning. We've had a lot of you know, extraordinary healers and gifted mm -hmm. beings on. And there's some power with this medium, you know, the television medium. and. You know, after I watch the shows that the people do, where they do like groundings or healings, or you know, work, working through a method. Now it almost doesn't seem because people would have to respond to you answer-wise, but energetically, I think that almost, you know, you moving towards the camera and doing that, there would be, you know, it, maybe it, today's not the right time and there isn't enough time to do it in this segment or something like that, but that at some point that you like doing that healing on a, you know, on a global way, because this show has the availability of reaching out on a global way. It's not in a, you know, it's in a studio at the moment, but it won't be at some point. It'll be available all over the world for free on, you know. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, it's just something that just seems to be coming through me that that would be a beautiful thing to do. Yeah, and, and what, what I've been doing, I've been doing little uh, small demonstrations that I have the YouTube clips on. Mm -hmm. And because I, th I think uh, the easiest way to learn is when people see it. Yeah, you can relate to what's going on inside yourself. So um, maybe even now you and I can do a little um, prompt to that, mm -hmm. um, to what I'm talking about, about witnessing. So if you were to just watch your breath going through your nostrils, just okay. be aware, come, come into your awareness of <coughs> and then take the breath down into your belly and the audience can do it together. And you have to make sure that you're taking the breath and following your breath down. Watch to how deep the breath is going and, and just follow the breath into your belly. Take a really deeper breath and follow it down into your belly. And make sure that you're exhaling. The exhalation needs to be, uh, you have to be aware of the exhalation. Is it well. any like nose or mouth? Any? Just follow the breath. Just follow it wherever yes. it's coming. Then Just watch the breath. All right. Just watch the breath, and okay. no, no mental work here. Only awareness. Okay. Yeah. And as you as you keep looking inside, that's how you're going to see what's going on inside. You're going to see how deep the breath is going. And when you're looking in, breathing to the belly as you're exhaling. Just before you exhale, watch the feeling. What's the feeling and watch the thought? What kind of thought comes to your mind? And say, Are you talking to me? Yes, and say it. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you see? What kind of thought comes to mind? Huh? Okay. Actually, there's no thought at the t at at the point in between the inhale and What's the exhale. What's the feeling? The feeling. Between the inhale and exhale, there is never a thought. That's the gap that we want to to come to. Oh. That's where consciousness is. Right. But what what we want to do is also right now. Watch to see what's going on inside. What kind of feeling is there? You know, peace. Okay, so w when, when I I'm seeing something else. What are you seeing? W what I'm seeing is I I I'm actually reading that and that the thought in, the, uh, in your exhalation. And this is something that I'm talking about, the, the part which is in the bottom of the iceberg, and it's mm. in the belly. And m most of this... Um, Emotions that are sitting there in the bottom, they come from our childhood or they come from some experiences. And the root of it is fear. Hmm. So there's fear. Can you connect with that? In the belly. More breath in the belly. Now, what happens most of the time we feel fear? Nobody ever says, I'm afraid. Yeah? I don't feel afraid. I mean, you know, if you're unconscious, I guess you wouldn't, but I don't feel afraid. <clears throat> are you seeing any instances that are creating that? Okay, breathe another time. Here, here's, um, I call this fear a spiritual fear in a way. Even though we think I'm not afraid to let go, there is definitely a fear I'm afraid to let go, and that is coming from the ego. Because in that letting go, it's the letting go when once the ego comes to recognize itself, then there's that fear of death. It's impossible not to feel it. It's, it's the step toward liberation. It's like the last step toward liberation. I'm afraid that the fear to surrender into the unknown. Have you ever experienced that? Uh, I have experienced it. Okay, so that's still sitting in your body, mm. and you need to go through that because that's how you co you're going to to break the veil. And one way to do it 
like I said earlier, is through expression. So even a simple acknowledgement, I'm afraid, out loud, would move the energy. So just try it, even if you don't feel the fear right now. It mm. doesn't matter. You don't need to feel it right now. Yeah? So just say, I'm afraid, and watch to see what happens. I'm afraid. And exhale. And one more time. Breathe in. I'm afraid. Okay, now try to breathe in, say it, and then exhale. I'm afraid. Okay, you can open your eyes. What did you feel when you said that? Not much different, to tell you the truth. Didn't you feel a sense of relaxation? Something went deeper. Something if it did, it was not as m that much deeper that I could... Try one more time. <clears throat> and exhale out into your feet, this time. Okay, breathe in, say the words. I'm afraid. Exhale out into your feet. One more time. I'm afraid. Exhale out into your feet. Lots of breath out into your feet. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of the unknown. No, we'll see. No, I, I really can't see. Because what I see is happening with your energy. Something is opening, actually. Mm -hmm. It's almost like as you're saying it, your energy is starting to expand. Mm -hmm. and, and joy is starting to come in. You can't feel that? I'm seeing it. <laughs> There's a joy coming in that as you're expressing it, the joy automatically comes in because there's also a knowing. Yeah, I think, you know, it's like, well, I guess it'll be determined. It will be determined how I feel. But we're coming to the end of the show. If anybody wants information about MOD or the art project, anything, call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. 805-687-2053. There's an opportunity for everybody. There's so much beauty out there. Good night. We love you. Good night. Mm -hmm.